discussion you are well 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 very well, 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 well welcome and also a lot is uh, there that will be really unpacking in the subsequent hours but remember uh, to also subscribe to our youtube channel and also uh, like our facebook pages and twitter that is where really you'll be able to enjoy with us together and really be updated on what we are having here remember after this show we'll be having the news in Lugarati that will be brought to you by uh, Muklia Lawrence and also uh, thereafter we'll have uh, the Daktari show that comes exactly at 10 and uh, that's where you learn a lot of uh, issues to do with your health uh, issues to do with the uh, uh, various diseases that have already come on the ground. Maybe you might have a, a worrying factor or you might be uh, feeling some pain somewhere that you want answers uh, for, okay? That you are searching for the answers. Uh, this will be uh, the, uh, the best show that can be able to uh, give you important advice on as far as uh, the issues of health management is concerned. So uh, you should be uh, on on awaiting for what will be coming at that time but you can engage the doctors at the time uh, when they will be in and because uh, this will be live uh, a live program and also uh, you can just move to your youtube channel and uh, uh, that is uh, uh, that that will be uh, broadcasted so you you'll be there to uh, comment or really ask those questions relevant questions that you feel like uh, the doctors will be able to answer and thereafter we'll be having more of the programs coming up to really midday you will have the news in Alur that is Lemangia that will be brought to you by uh, Peace or Chuck and thereafter we'll have uh, many other programs like the wishful time for those of you who are sports lovers but also we have the entertainment show that comes at five uh, that will be brought by uh, to you by dj moss and uh, the team hassan the big brother Liz, uh, Liz Hannes, and those are the people who will be behind that but also the day will be concluded by nail cast uh, that will be the news in english uh, that will be led by christina komoringa but also very importantly, you can really be part of uh, all these shows uh, once you follow us on the YouTube channel. But also, you can uh, use the Zuku satellite uh, that if you have it, uh, you can be able to catch us live from there. That is uh, that's how you'll be able to progress or really understand what is being uh, discussed here. Let's take a break. We'll be coming back shortly with many other issues that are turned. Thank you. West Nile TV, lighting up the region. West Nile TV, lighting up the region. viewers of West Nile TV, I am Sifiana Julie, the host for the K Dogo and Sabiti show. As we conclude this year, I am wishing you a Merry Christmas and a prosperous New Year 2024. Our the four Angere to Mini Pezo, West Nile TV in Nezo Sawadima Aliarese. Has any mini bini a bizu or titantondo West Nile TV at the Nazore Se. Mion the Marusi Feta Emmanuel E. Ejolaza La Pimidri O Pitisi Erozo Sawa Nari E. Erozo Dua Lo Pere Etazu Udua Aziani. Ani Amete Tuambo Christmas Niru Matiabo Majokini. Lete Tuambunde Ma Azi Amadria Moke Azina Droma Temibe Ma Kobine Miaza. Itu ambudi ma aldia ili odiri ma fivini amadria moke Madia ni joki ningoni Merry Christmas Awadifu itu ambusi adroma temibe
as the small stand Christmas and the bells jingle, dress yourself up for the stunning aroma of togetherness this festive season. Remember also to take care of yourself, a partner, family from funks of violence and financial misuse. Receive my heartfelt gratitude and love for the support you showed towards us. Wishing you a Merry Christmas and prosperous business year 2024. My name is Federic Jamadri. I report news at West Nile Television. I also do the Cocolirical show that comes every Monday to Friday discussing the issues on current affairs from the hour of 7 a.m. up to 9 a.m. Wish you a Merry Christmas and a prosperous New Year 2024. Mori Pilubara, I work for many of you, West Nile TV, Be Sawadia Serese. My name is Mamukulia Lawrence, I work as a lap in many, a tunani, Uduwaloni, Pere Uduazia Serese. Wangi Natalini, Richa Mani Vwari, Kani Maloa Ia Mavukini, Le Wangiri, Ama Injiri, Le Tasi, Asianjusi, Vini Ikisi, Kani Anya, Uduambudi, Onyiru. Nile TV, lighting up the region. West Nile TV, lighting up the region. West Nile TV, lighting up the region. All right, welcome back from that commercial break. Earlier, I highlighted on the issues uh, that we are discussing here. Remember, it's uh, very, very important to be security vigilant or cautious uh, at this uh, festive season, but also up to the hour of uh, 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 up to that time when. We children will be going to school because it's very very sad to hear that uh, many of uh, our children have been trafficked and sold and uh, first uh, let's move to the story about uh, 70 per day crimes committed in western region and that's a, a report that came from a police and uh, if you look at uh, what is happening there you realize that uh, there is uh, there is a lot uh, that is uh, caused during uh, this uh, this festive season but uh, that statistics was uh, derived from uh, the eve of uh, christmas up to the christmas day and the boxing day and uh, this actually puts a uh, uh, navy district uh, top on the lock in the western region followed by uh, zombo district and this was uh, followed closely by marasa district and uh, koboko and the rest uh, follows uh, that way but um if you look at uh, the crimes that have been committed uh, uh, within the three days uh, the the biggest is uh, the crime of assault okay people were assaulting each other at some at some point somebody maybe was uh, having <laughs> was <laughs> jealous about you at some point he uses that opportunity to just uh, sneak and uh, really uh, grab you and start uh, maybe uh, uh, fighting with you and those are things that have been identified there but if you look at um, the breakdown out of the 208 uh, uh, crimes that have been reported at the various police stations in the 13 local governments I mean a rural city, a rural district, Koboko, Koboko municipality, Maratsa district, Terego district, Mar Madiokolo district, Zombo district, Nebi district, Pakwach, Ajuman, Moyo, and Yumbe. All these 
have actually re uh, reported 208 uh, uh, crimes that have been committed. And if you look at all that, an uh, assault is on the top with 156 uh, cases uh, that were registered. But also, uh, the districts that are on the lead is, uh, as I, I told you earlier, or uh, one or the, the the one the number one is Nebi District with 42 cases registered within three days. Uh, this is followed by Zombo District with 38 cases registered. Followed by Marasa District with 32 cases. Followed by Mar uh, Madi Ma Madio Kolo District with uh, 20. 28 cases registered and uh, uh, the rest of the districts like a rural city with 24 uh, uh, a rural district with the uh, eight cases and that is uh, uh, the, the least district by the way uh, Terego and um, uh, Terego district and the uh, Nebi municipality tie with uh, 17 cases registered each and uh, the rest are uh, continuous but unfortunately deaths were registered in Nebi district that is uh, two deaths that were registered and this were uh, uh, the, the mob action and uh, people were killed and um, there are three people who died of um, unknown illness uh, that was registered but also uh, the, the issues uh, to do with snatching of mobile phones was the second crime on the lead okay that is uh, what is actually being uh, delivered there but uh, if you look at um, the statements are uh, from uh, the police public relations officer Josephine Angutia uh, who uh, is actually the one for Western region I will understand clearly that uh, most of these crimes were committed under the influence of alcohol and sometimes are drug abuse. The drugs that are being abused mostly include alcohol, include uh, people uh, chewing marungi and uh, those who are there for the smokers. <laughs> those are some of the crimes uh, and uh, those are factors that have been attributed to this. But also uh, the GBV cases come number five. Okay. That means at least people have been able to be uh, uh, morally upright in terms of uh, having uh, maybe uh, managing their homes during this festive season is concerned. But last year, if you look at uh, what was on the lead was uh, actual GBV cases, uh, that, uh, that is uh, gender-based violence cases. But this year, it is the contrary. It is assault that is on the lead. And that means um, people have uh, grudges all everywhere. And then we, we have these other people who are, are maybe ignited by the alcohol they have taken or some of the substances they have consumed uh, that actually forces them to start uh, troubling their colleagues. And that's uh, what is actually there. But also, uh, if you look at uh, some of the issues around uh, this, uh, these crimes, uh, this has put Western region uh, to be at least in a fair state in terms of peaceful celebrations, uh, though uh, the cases uh, seem to be worrying, uh, with 70 per day cases registered. That means if you divide that by uh, 24 hours, that, <laughs> that is something uh, very grave or really uh, big in terms of, that means per day, if you have 70 people uh, maybe beaten, uh, at every point and uh, they are registered at police. How many have not gone to police to register a case is also another issue that is happening there. So we need to prepare for the next event and that is uh, the new year. Very, very well if you want to actually move away from uh, this kind of issues. So let's be uh, really uh, good friends, good neighbors and uh, good colleagues at our workplaces, at our homes, at our uh, places of leisure, okay? Places of leisure. When you go, please do not really hurt someone. Be uh, really friendly to everyone. Uh, be accommodative so that you are loved in your community, so that people appreciate what you are doing, okay? It's uh, very, very important to do that. If you don't do that, that means you will always be troublesome, you will always be in conflict with the law. At some point, some of you may not see the new year coming just because of uh, some of these kind of uh, incidences uh, that happen, okay? Very, very important to note that uh, we have to be, uh, or we have to coexist. You have to see your neighbor as yourself. You have to respect, even the Bible tells us that uh, love your neighbor as you love yourself is the biggest 
is the biggest commitment that the government actually commanded, uh, that God actually commanded uh, through Jesus Christ, his son. And that is uh, what we should be able to believe in and be able to practically do it. Okay, now if uh, uh, the old people uh, in the Old Testament, the old people, the ancestors that we talk about were able to do this, why is it that it is difficult for us to coexist? Why is it that we are it is difficult for us to accommodate our neighbors with us? Much as we have uh, those uh, challenges of uh, maybe financial inequalities, uh, maybe uh, fluctuation in income levels and so on, uh, that oscillation should not really be able to be a, a factor that uh, stops uh, or prevents us uh, from uh, being uh, living in brotherhood or sisterhood. Okay, very very important. And uh, some of the cases have uh, been uh, related to relationships. Uh, people. Uh, want to actually date other people's wives. I don't know. That is cohabiting or I don't know. Some people say it is the uh, extramarital affairs, which is actually not good in uh, religious uh, religion phase, even culturally not allowed, not allowed at all. And uh, that is one thing uh, that is actually causing family disintegration, that is causing some people beaten and so on. Sometimes uh, people get annoyed from nowhere. And, and looks at uh, look at you uh, the way you behave and that's where really uh, some people become uh, enemies at that point and as as far as uh, the festive seasons are concerned we have not been able to resist uh, threats of uh, maybe uh, uh, threats of uh, ADF uh, threats of M23, threats of rebel activities from other people or, or uh, the neighbor encounters much as where we are really uh, in between countries that are having conflicts at their territories and this is uh, one pride that we should be able to appreciate the uganda police for and also uh, say that uh, they have been able to at least uh, use the tactics uh, very very well to actually man the routes or, or the, the borders okay uh, you remember before christmas we had really a serious discussion here with the police uh, trying to give guidelines on how people should be able to peacefully celebrate uh, the christmas and the boxing day and uh, this i think many people learned from this and also we are able to uh, do the needful uh, that made at least uh, the celebrations peaceful, but also the event organizers did their part in uh, in trying to uh, minimize insecurity, which was a, quite a very good thing uh, that I think uh, through this platform we are able to provide uh, as Westernal Television, we are able to bring for you those guests to actually give you the information which I appreciate that uh, you have been able to take it positively. Basing on now what we see, uh, we should be able to uh, gear towards now having also the peaceful New Year celebrations in every part of uh, this uh, region or in every corner of this region where we'll be able to uh, do something best or better for ourselves and also the country at large. Once we are in uh, an insecurity in, in situation, uh, it destabilizes uh, the country generally. Even if it is one family that has lost their dear one, people feel the pain. That's why you see people uh, maybe traveling all the way from Kampala to come and attend such a funeral service. It's uh, the feeling uh, that people have for one another. It is a feeling that everyone should be able to actually do uh, to ensure that there is peace at, a, at every moment. Okay. Now, when you are in conflict, you actually create in, insecurity with, uh, to those innocent neighbors of yours. And that's what we, we, we talk about. That's what we actually emphasize, that why can't we live in a better way that is accepted by everyone? in a way that is uh, more convenient to everyone, that is uh, actually accommodative for everyone to really be in, uh, for everyone to admire, for everyone to actually say, yes, uh, I think uh, what we're doing is, uh, is the best. That's what we, we need to do. But let's move away from that story and uh, look at uh, the story of uh, trafficking of uh, uh, 18 girls from western region and these girls are from nebi and pakwat districts earlier i i had uh, mistakenly said it was from nebi but uh, the, uh, the the truth is uh, these girls we are 
conned from uh, the districts of uh, Nebi and Pakwas. And this is uh, by a company yet to be identified because really these girls, uh, we are told uh, that uh, there's a scholarship opportunity that is in the Massacre district. And um, uh, all of them, uh, we are aged between 15 and uh, 21 and these are girls uh, who are, some of them have just completed senior four others dropped out of school others uh, we are still uh, studying okay uh, but uh, looking at uh, uh, the, uh, the situation where we are currently we are for holidays uh, there is no uh, education time at the moment and uh, according to the timetable uh, ex uh, 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 children will be able to report to school on the 5th of February 2024 and that means uh, parents should be prepared but um, unfortunately these girls we are called uh, just after they came out of uh, the whole days okay that was one thing uh, that means our parents paid deaf ears they were not really vigilant enough to actually monitor their children some of these girls went according to the testimonies from some of the parents who received their girls on boxing day the uh, girls actually left without their notice they have been actually looking for them and some of them registered cases at police and some of them did not go to police but they were uh, eager waiting for where these girls have gone and just uh, relaxed uh, like that and that's one thing uh, that we should be able to really understand as citizens these uh, girls are from, uh, drawn from uh, the different uh, town councils and uh, villages from uh, both Nebi municipality, Nebi district and Pakwat town council. Okay, those are the areas where these girls were picked. But um, according to some of the girls, um, uh, they were... Uh, for for one of them who comes from uh, from Naravur Town Council, she says that uh, actually uh, the, the company coordinator told her that uh, she's going to study for free uh, for the rest of her life and uh, she will be employed in Finland, and that's what she uh, was uh, proud of and uh, was well motivated by those uh, speeches, and uh, she had to append her signature and boarded the bus and that was how she left and uh, she realized that the same bus was actually hired for them all of them actually boarded the same bus and they were all uh, traveling in the bus and uh, these girls actually came uh, were, were actually received by the deputy uh, resident uh, district commissioner for uh, Nebi that is Hassan and uh, according to Hassan uh, this is quite unfortunate and uh, with other security agencies they were actually able to coordinate quickly to rescue these girls and um, some of them uh, were promised a job worth 1 million Ugandan sellings and uh, that is what they will be earning every month but unfortunately this was not the situation in Mparara uh, okay in uh, actually in Masaka district where they went and this is one serious story remember there are a number of uh, uh, scenarios of this nature that were being seen across the country you, if you remember uh, the story around M Global that was uh, conning so many people from different parts of this country and bringing them to West Nile, especially in a rural city where they were, their activities were prominently seen. And also in Soroti, the same was uh, the issue of uh, conning people and uh, just uh, moving away with their monies. Uh, sometimes they ask for money from you and uh, worth 1.5 million thereafter. You're supposed to go and mobilize more people to join uh, the group and this is uh, something that has actually been on the uh, on the on on, on the uh, really part, uh, part have been so many people in the different parts of this country remember the communications are from uh, uh, the uh, anti-terrorism and tra trafficking in persons at the directorate in, uh, in police headquarters communicated that uh, M Global is also on the look of uh, police for uh, 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 so many crimes committed. One is uh, uh, forgery and also operating illegally and talking about the issues of uh, 
uh, people's uh, trafficking in persons and many other offenses that are being uh, highlighted there. But uh, in West Nile, uh, this was a, a tug of war to evict these people. Remember the uh, RCC by intent, that was uh, Alicia Kello, uh, who had to use all the, uh, the security uh, means to ensure that these people uh, their offices were closed. Some of the of, uh, some of the officers were arrested and uh, taken to uh, jail, and that was how uh, M Global disappeared in a rural city. But uh, many of uh, these uh, organizations come in the names of education, in, in the names of providing employment opportunities, and many others. So, as community members, what do we have to learn from this? Is what we should be able to understand. First of all, uh, the, the, the authority or the power entrusted into you by God was that you should be the servant or the head of the family. Be able to collect all your children, gather them, educate them, and be with them all the time. And that was how really things would have been done. But if you look at uh, what is happening now, many people do not want to actually offer that parental guidance to their children. Many do not actually appreciate that they are supposed to do this. Okay, now this is quite unfortunate that um, uh, it comes at a time when people are busy with their family members, with, the, with everyone at home, uh, with their children. This is the time you should be able to appreciate or, uh, or be able to guide their children and uh, really uh, assign tasks to them so that you keep them busy, so that you actually make sure that they don't actually move el anywhere else but rather love their home. It's the issue. Now, uh, this is the time you use the children to raise school fees for themselves. How do you do that? First of all, you take these children to do, uh, to do garden work, you take them to graze animals. You even, as the parent, associate yourself with them, give your time, understand their issues. What do you admire outside there that I've not provided? Fill that gap, understand from them. It's very, very important. If you, if you are able to do that, trust me, your children will not love to go with anyone else, but rather look for you as a parent, okay? Whether the mother, whether the father, they will enjoy their home. As long as you are able to provide all those basic requirements the children will love. Children love playing. Children love uh, lesser activities, especially uh, the plays, the... Uh, uh, if, uh, and, and, and one other thing is uh, if your family is uh, that where the parents are rude on children, no one's child will love to come and associate with your family, okay? Even neighbors will be in, uh, not in good terms, will not love to come and stay with you at your home. So that is what will be happening. And uh, this will force your children, because the children want to uh, uh, play in, 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 a, in a community or in, in common. When they are gathered, maybe when uh, they, are, uh, they are in a congregation, when they are with, mix up with others that have other ideas, that's what children love. So in case your home is not able to provide that conducive environment for children to actually learn, for children to associate and so on, that is where your children will be able to move to other people's homes, will be able to learn other bad behaviors that you may want to prov uh, maybe avoid, but it can't come because of those kind of things. So let's uh, be vigilant, let's take a cautious of uh, the children moving on the streets and moving to other places, learning from other people. You see that? If you want to really impact moral well-being in your children, make sure that you provide the needful that they deserve. Understand what the children need. Understand their desires and then provide them necessary support. If you don't have anything, use the rightful language to tell the children. Remember, the law is very, very clear. A person below the age of 18 the decision is taken by the parent. So if you are the parent at home and it is the 15 year old girl who is taking a decision to look for scholarship opportunities, that means you are not providing enough. Most times children run for scholarships uh, or, uh, to look for scholarship opportunities because uh, they uh, realize that uh, you are unable to afford the school fees. Sometimes par as parents, we expose most of our weaknesses that 
we don't even explain to the children but instead we become rude to the children and that is where really children feel like uh, they are uncomfortable in the home maybe they they have to look for alternatives and that's why sometimes the children decide for themselves that maybe this is the best that i can do for myself not knowing the future implications of their actions okay that is what is actually happening there let's take a break from here We'll be actually coming back with your guests to discuss more of the issues that we have here. Thank you. West Nile TV, lighting up the region. your family the bigger feast this Christmas with Star Times upgrade to Kongere promotion. Nova customers on satellite decoder simply pay 20,000 shillings special bouquet monthly subscription to enjoy smart bouquet for free. Enjoy variety of entertainment including Hello Mr. Right on Makula Chika, Kazanya Kukazanyo on Makula, animations and cartoons on Boeing, series on TLC and Star Life. So make this the unforgettable holiday. More content, help your family. This is time for working hard and producing and able to help somebody who is need able to give to your loved ones. This is time for giving for God so loved us and gave his only begotten son. Do not go taking, give, and then you will receive. When, if you are planning to rob somebody, listen to me carefully, God is not happy with that. If you are, if you are planning to steal people's things, God is not happy with that. Destroy everything that makes you an enemy of your neighbor. It's only God who can destroy those tendencies in your life and that habit in your life so that instead of taking, you are a giver because we need to demonstrate love in our time. Again, this is not time for sexual immorality. But this is time for us to prepare ourselves to receive the blessing of God. Many of us are going to waste our bodies in going into people's homes and going with people's wives and going with the people's daughters and we are going to waste our lives out there. Listen, this is time for you to open your heart, open your hands and receive the blessing of God. I speak to people who are listening to me. If you are listening to me and you are in West Nile, my region, will you make your body the temple of the Holy Spirit and guard it? Allow your body to be used to bless our region. Do not destroy somebody's relationship by misusing his wife or his daughter. Allow yourself to be a channel of blessing because God brings you his life in order to bless other people. Again, this is not time for dancing the whole night. Some people are going to go into dancing spree, in discos and everything the whole night. In my place where I am seated, the devil has only given a deprived people who are wizards to dance at night. Why do they dance at night? Because they dance naked, which they can't do during the day. Why are you deprived of sleep? When you should eat and drink and praise God and go to bed and sleep, then go and worship God tomorrow without a hangover. Dancing at night, going to spend time out there with other women, with other girls, with other men, is not going to give you any benefit of celebrating such a day as this. And this is a time for praises. This is a time for worship of God, because God has given us a gift that we cannot afford.
as the small stand Christmas and the bells jingle, dress yourself up for the stunning aroma of togetherness this festive season. Remember also to take care of yourself, a partner, family from funks of violence and financial misuse. Receive my heartfelt gratitude and love for the support you showed towards us. Wishing you a Merry Christmas and prosperous business year 2024. Our four midri angere to mini pezo West Nile TV ni nezo sawadi ma aliare se hasi ni mini vini ibizu oti tandundo West Nile TV ya di nezo se miomve marusi feta Emmanuel e ejola za la pe midri opite se erozo sawa nari e erozo dua lo pere tazu odua azia ni ani amete tu ambo Christmas ni rumatia bo majoki ni lete tu ambunde ma ati amadria moke hasi ni adroma. Temi be ma kobi ne miaza itu ambudi ma aldia ili odiri ma fivini amadria moke madia ni yoki ningoni Merry Christmas awadfo itu ambosi adroma temi be. Nile TV lighting up the region. Family, the bigger feast this Christmas with Star Times upgrade to Kongere promotion. Novel customers on Antenna Decoder simply pay 16,000 shillings copper bouquet monthly subscription to enjoy basic bouquet for free. Enjoy variety of entertainment including Hello Mr. Right on Makula Chika, Kazanya Kukazanyo on Makula, animations and cartoons on Boeing, series on TLC and Star Life. Even better, we have have added all your favorite local channels so make this the unforgettable holiday more content help your family west nile tv lighting up the region West Nile TV, lighting up the region.
family the bigger feast this Christmas with Star Times upgrade to Kongere promotion. Novel customers on Antenna Decoder simply pay 16,000 shillings copper bouquet monthly subscription to enjoy basic bouquet for free. Enjoy variety of entertainment including Hello Mr. Right on Makula Chika, Kazanya Kukazanyo on Makula, animations and cartoons on Boeing, series on TLC and Star Life. Even better, we have added all your favorite local channels. So, make this the unforgettable holiday. More content, help your family. West Nile TV, lighting up the region. West Nile TV, lighting up the region. Right, a very good morning. We are back from uh, the break. And you have, uh, yeah, yeah, I, 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 I hope you are seeing two faces at, at once now. That's a <laughs> new change now. I told you earlier on we'll be having a guest from Madio Kolo District Local Government. And this is uh, now the chairman of the district, Dravis Moladris. You're most welcome. Thank you, viewer. My name is, as you have heard, I'm the district chairman of Madokolo. Okay, uh, maybe without wasting time, there's a lot, a lot uh, that is going on and really people have been waiting for and that is uh, the issues to do with the restoration or uh, revamping the activities of Azai Wildlife Reserve that most of our people treasured. Remember, this facility has been uh, the one that is uh, cherished by so many people and uh, because of... Uh, it been really uh, reluctant or maybe unutilized uh, for quite a long period of time. There's been a call to restore our bring back animals into the reserve and this is what has been really uh, sipping discussions. Remember uh, uh, last year in December government of Uganda through uh, different uh, ministries launched a project that is uh, uh, invest in Uganda, okay, and uh, this is uh, geared towards uh, restoring uh, the wildlife reserves and also looking at uh, how to improve these facilities uh, to attract more tourism, but also uh, create uh, maybe provide uh, important uh, time for the nature restoration general in the Albertan Rift and Western region. And this is what has been happening. And uh, in that uh, 1.6 million uh, US dollar project, this is expected to actually finance the issues of fencing of uh, these wildlife reserves, including Madio Kolo, uh, uh, the one in Madio Kolo district, that is the Jai Wildlife Reserve, but also uh, other wildlife reserves that we may mention, like uh, Machison Falls and uh, uh, Queen Elizabeth uh, National Park and many others uh, that are in the country. But now we are discussing about uh, the, uh, uh, the, uh, the cry about uh, why the animals are not brought. Because most times uh, the Ajayi Wildlife Reserve is uh, predominantly known for the, uh, the, the white rhinos. Maybe chairman, uh, let's move into that. <laughs> How far has this gone? Because there were issues to do with the land. There were issues to do with the, uh, the facilities around uh, the game reserve. Uh, how far has the district gone with its efforts of uh, breaking back uh, these white rhinos uh, through the agencies uh, that are responsible for that? Thank you, moderator. Dear viewer, I want to say, in that cell, we are in course. We started the program for restoration of white rhinos in Tajai Game Reserve from December last year mm. by holding district council.
to receive the report from Wildlife Authority. Mm. They presented their desires, their plans, and with them we agreed to do certain specific issues at specific times. Mm -hmm. One of those was for them to brief the district leaders, which they did. We also asked them to brief the opinion leaders, which was successfully done. Mm -hmm. With them, we programmed to undertake barazas in the neighboring sub-counties, which included Pawar, mm -hmm. Ogoko, and in the town council with, I think, Okolo. Mm. We successfully moved to the communities and we briefed them about that plan. And one key milestone in the course of restoration was providing uh, a study tour for the affected community, which we successfully did this month, mm. between 12th to 17th. The district leaders, together with the community members from particular Logoko, we moved for a study tour and we learned a lot. As we have been doing these meetings, mm. there is also work going on in the reserve itself. What type of work is that? Uh, the, the work <laughs> they are doing yeah. is uh, reducing the pre-population in the game reserve. You know, since the reserve was not properly utilized mm -hmm. by bringing in other animals, it became a thick forest. Which forest this time cannot permit other animals to live well there? So this time. I One believe right that uh, maybe uh, animals live better when they're in the forest. Uh, no, 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 <laughs> they don't need the thick forest. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Of course, now, uh, they will prefer what we call the savanna wood mm. land. Mm. Huh? Savanna wood land, mm. sparsely populated with trees. Mm. So, the Uganda Wildlife Authority currently is uprooting some of the trees mm. to leave space for the wild animals to come. Mm. So following the study tour, we are now in the course of beginning to fence the game reserve mm. and that will be done by UA itself. Okay. Hopefully from February mm. onwards mm. the other animals will come. But besides this, there is also going to be a deliberate effort to rechannel mm. some of the roads in the reserve mm. and that will be guided by where will the animals be placed mm. where will they be favorably placed so in those areas where we feel a specific kind of animals should stay we may channel the, some of the roads to pave ways for tourists to go and track them mm. this is the development we have as of now Okay, uh, maybe uh, for someone who has just heard about Hadzai Wildlife Reserve, mm. in uh, three minutes, first give us a genesis of uh, how this reserve came to be uh, a protected area for government. Well, the Hadzai Game Reserve was identified way back in around uh, 1934, mm. when we are still under the colonial rule. And uh, our chief, Ajay, together with the colonial rulers, reached an agreement that, okay, we can use this place here for keeping the white rhinos. Mm. Towards 1954, the white rhinos were introduced mm. into the reserve. Of course, together with other animals, including uh, the elephants. Mm. So, the development there kept increasing until the time when we reached, I think around 1978-79, when the Gorilla War started. Mm. So it paved the way for people again to poach the animals. So when the animals were poached, all of a sudden we found that the elephants migrated, mm. the buffaloes disappeared, 
and the last piece of the white rhinos was evacuated. Mm. That is how we have been moving on with Ajay Wildlife Game Reserve. Mm. Yes. Okay, um, uh, for those of you who are watching us now, we are discussing pertinent issues on uh, the restoration of Ajay Wildlife Reserve, but also understanding uh, why the need for us to actually revamp the activities there. If you look at uh, Ajay Wildlife Res uh, Reserve right now, for quite a long period of time, maybe I will say uh, 10 to 20 years now, we have not been able to uh, collect revenue as uh, local governments in uh, that uh, particular uh, facility, especially uh, Mario Colo that is uh, uh, there uh, hosting the uh, wildlife reserve and the uh, uh, National Park. Okay, that is it. And uh, this is a uh, one step forward by government to ensure that. Uh, Tourism is uh, a, a enhanced, okay? Once tourism is enhanced, uh, that it will be one of the issues uh, that are of, of concern to increase uh, the revenue, to increase uh, many other things. But uh, let's move uh, uh, to why the need to increase or to at least uplift the face of Azai uh, Wildlife Reserve and how important will this be to the people in the Mariokolo district and Western region at large? Uh, given that Ajay Wildlife Game Reserve was a gazetted land mm. for wildlife conservation and uh, as it has been redundant, mm. sometime back in 2005, government took initiative to reintroduce the white rhinos, the rhinos, into Uganda. Mm. Uh, in the course of doing that, very many actors showed interest mm. but one of the vigilant ugandans clever ugandans <laughs> took that opportunity mm. moved very fast and created a ranch in Izua. it was a forceful creation i'm sorry to say so forceful creation and uh, they channeled the white uh, the rhinos that were supposed to be reintroduced into uganda and particularly to Ajay Game Reserve, to Ziwa Game Reserve. Mm. And uh, all along it has been the dream of Uganda Wildlife Authority to see that these animals should come back to where they belonged, mm. the rhinos. Mm. So as they have been taking care of the rhinos in the Ziwa range, they equally feel time is right for the rhinos to come back to Ajay Wildlife Game Reserve. Mm -hmm. Of course now, when you look at the size of the land, the ranch in Ziwa, it is smaller than Ajay Game Reserve. It is actually uh, twice smaller. That one there is around 70 uh, kilometers squared, mm -hmm. not miles squared. But Ajay Game Reserve is 169 square miles so, Ua is now in the process of bringing back these animals to where they belonged. Mm -hmm. Of course, the previous studies saw that our environment here is suitable for them. Mm -hmm. The climate is good, the vegetation is good, everything is good, there is water for them, so they feel time is right for them to come back. Mm -hmm. Of course, now if we are to reintroduce the rhinos, we are not only going to handle now the rhinos alone. Mm. We have been talking to them to have the other species of animals brought together with the rhinos. So we are likely to have now the giraffes being brought, mm. the zebras being brought, and any other animal species that will find the environment here suitable for their habitation. Okay, the viewer, let's move away from that uh, topic or update about uh, the Jai Wildlife Reserve. But one of uh, the touching issues is now the issues to do with rampant bushfires uh, that are actually uh, are really causing a lot of uh, 
uh, havoc uh, or, uh, or endangering uh, the, sp uh, the species or uh, actually threatening uh, the ecosystem in the different parts of uh, this country. Remember, during uh, from the periods of uh, November, December up to February, there's always uh, that uh, threat coming from uh, uh, people setting bushes or forests or maybe uh, uh, yeah those kind of uh, things on fire and uh, most times this is uh, uh, for different reasons sometimes people will say we are burning this grass because we want a new one to come up for our animals there are some people who just set fire uh, or bush on fire for lesser purposes i want to be the first to set it this year you see that those kind of things mm -hmm. and remember action is one of uh, uh, the uh, criminal offenses uh, that are being penalized in uh, by the act uh, or the constitution of this country and uh, once you are caught uh, you are supposed to be jailed for one full year or you pay a fine of not less than two million ugandan settings and that's one thing that is uh, there but also if you look at uh, what is happening now uh, for specifically in Mario Kolo district uh, it happened to move there some time just like two weeks ago and uh, you realize that uh, the electricity poles are already falling down why because they have been weakened by the fire and so on. Sometimes termites come in, sometimes they are burned down by these wildfires. But also, this fire moves up to the game reserve that we have just talked about. Maybe, uh, Chairman, what is the current situation? Now I've, I've, I've moved there for, <laughs> I've stayed now for two weeks without going back. Uh, how, what is the situation currently? Well, Moderator, I want to begin by lamenting. It is very, very unfortunate that our people love burning bush. And when you look at some of the reasons, when you hear them, mm. they are not pleasing at all. People set bushes on fire for hunting rodents. Mm. Some of them set the bushes on fire for fetching firewood. Mm -hmm. Some set them on fire for opening roads. You know, some of these reasons are not convincing at all. Why should you waste your time running after rodent? Alu or Drongbadi? <laughs> huh? Running after rats. Now you're drunk. <laughs> huh? You set the whole vegetation on fire so as to hunt for rats. Now, we have ever told them mm. there are disadvantages with this bush burning. One is the available vegetation that our animals will use to graze during dry season. It is being disrupted. Once you burn the bush now, it takes long, over one month, for you to get a greener pasture coming out. Two. When you set this bush on fire, it has effects on the soil. It loosens the soil texture. So for those who are setting their own farms on fire, please know that you are destabilizing the stability of the soil. Times when you set this bush on fire, it will burn until when it set someone's home on fire. Mm -hmm. These are issues we have ever experienced and arising from those experiences, we now expected the people to get rid of bush burning, but still they go on, 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 on burning bush every year. Mm -hmm. This time we have electricity lines moving along these roads and already they are being affected. You know, this issue here as leaders, we are not happy of it. But now our task, our challenge is identifying the person is difficult. Mm -hmm. All of the sudden you see smoke coming and very big fire advancing without knowing who has done it. Mm -hmm. There was a time around 2021 a woman set my own artificial forest on fire 
just because she wanted to go and fetch firewood. I had some trees, some poles I kept in the forest, over 200 poles, big poles which if sold would fetch for me a good amount of money. All these were set on fire. Mm. And some trees, you know, they don't like uh, burning. Once fire catches them, even if it strips, you see the, the tree drying. I lost over 200 trees on my farm. Mm. And these are the dangers of burning bush. It is real that it is happening and it is disheartening. Mm. I don't like it. And that is the situation in which we are. Mm. Yes. Okay, uh, this might not be only in Madio Koro. Um, what are the challenges local governments face in actually uh, trying to move on with this situation? Because uh, this, is, this seems to be something we have been living in uh, or, or with uh, for quite a long period of time. What is the new style that you have advanced as councils in the lower local governments to understand uh, maybe the remedies uh, to be put for this? Well, as council, I have not come across a specific motion that we have moved so as to stop both burning. Mm. However, we have an ordinance to do with the, the regulation of uh, charcoal burning. Mm -hmm. I don't know whether this particular item has a clause on the bush burning. Mm -hmm. But as local government, we have condemned the bush burning in Madokolo. We do not want it. Mm -hmm. And if we were to have very good coordination with our lower local governments, particularly the LCs, yeah. Why they will do something to track those who are involved in bush burning. Mm. I remember a scenario early this year when in Ogoko a whole family lost houses. Mm. Eventually they had to identify the person who set that fire. It brought in a lot of commotion. And some settlements were made, mm -hmm. you see, and we wouldn't want to go in that direction. Mm -hmm. We are human, we are learned, we are good listeners. Why can't we pick these simple tips that officers tell us, our production officers tell us, and work by? But in management, mm -hmm. mankind <coughs> is complex and variable. Okay, Even maybe, when we I condemn guess. those mm. who are not highly learned, mm. at times you even find it is the learned who has done it. And that is the challenge. <laughs> okay, we'll be moving into that already. Continue with that shortly after this break. But the question that will be coming with is uh, why is it that the local governments, now that they don't have laws or uh, really to pin some of these people who are being arrested, much as we have the Supreme Law that really does not allow this kind of activity to take place, why is it that the local governments are reluctant about acting on some of these issues? We'll come back to answer this question after the break. Thank you. Nile TV, lighting up the region.
Hello everybody watching West Nile Television. My name is Farish Majid. I'm a news anchor and a news reporter at West Nile TV as I said earlier on. From me to you this festive season, let's ensure that we remain vigilant because vigilance is all we need to remain safe during this period. From me to you, Merry Christmas and a prosperous new year. Family, the bigger feast this Christmas with Star Times upgrade to Kongere promotion. Nova customers on satellite decoder simply pay 20,000 shillings special bouquet monthly subscription to enjoy smart bouquet for free. Enjoy variety of entertainment including Hello Mr. Right on Makula Chika, Kazanya Kukazanyo on Makula, animations and cartoons on Boeing, series on TLC and Star Life. So make this the unforgettable holiday. More content, help your family. West Nile TV, lighting up the region. Okay, 32 minutes after the hour of 8, uh, that is, somebody will say, maybe in the other way around, uh, 28 minutes to 9 a.m., but I will be moving uh, forth with the discussion. So remember that uh, you'll be having the news in Luberati up next, that will be brought to you by Muklia Lawrence and his team there, but also many other programs will be coming. But we're here with a sale with the district chairman, Mario Kolo district, that is Drabesh Maladris, discussing the issues of uh, bus burning. Why is uh, this really continuing? I asked a question uh, that he had not answered. <laughs> I left it hanging because I wanted him to reflect on it. After the break, I'll be able to come back with it. Maybe let's pick it from there. Why is it that uh, most of these local governments are reluctant about this repeated offense being committed by people? Well, moderator, there are a number of factors, but key among them is uh, uh, the inability of our leaders, lower local leaders, to provide proper stewardship in leadership. You find certain things wrong mm. happen. Mm. But people do not want to take responsibility to address them. If a bush has been set on fire mm. in a village A, mm. we would expect that given the confinement of the people in that village, let someone have a knowledge of who must have set bush. Mm -hmm. And I would expect if inquiries are to be done, they shouldn't even take us one hour to find out who did it. But in our local setting, people don't want to mention the wrongs of other people. Mm -hmm. And they feel they are going to be condemned. They feel people are going to turn rise against them when, when they, they report, <laughs> when they mention people's <laughs> names. <laughs> huh? So, mm. it therefore makes it difficult for us to track those involved in this bad act. Mm. Of course now, if the local council one committee has failed, now you are the district. How will you succeed? in apprehending such wrongdoers. I think that problem in the leadership has been the key factor behind our inability to address these fact issues. Okay, maybe uh, you mentioned something uh, that is uh, to do with uh, <laughs> the mentality of the people. How do we change it? Uh, looking at uh, uh, the issues to do with somebody saying, ah, this is my relative, this is my 
maybe if I mention because uh, we are not in good terms with them, they might they might think it is a mention in this because the other time so and so the animals that might think I'm just mentioning this one because of that. But how do we change the mind of uh, the people in in relation to collaborating with the leaders, collaborating with the security agencies in fighting uh, this kind of crime? Because really, uh, uh, we will not really want to see this continue as we advocate for uh, greening, as we advocate for uh, maybe nature growth, well, well nature growth, especially where we talk about tourism, people don't want to be in the maybe desert areas. There's no one who would love to run uh, to, to see how a desert looks like. But people want to admire how a lake looks like, how a, 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 a certain kind of grass looks like, how uh, certain types of animals that love to be in green areas, how do they look like? That's where people want to admire. So how do we uh, really change this mind of the people? Well, it is all about dialogue. And uh, I can also say sensitization. Mm -hmm that uh, a wrong is a wrong, an offense is an offense. Let my local council one, chairman, committees, stand for the truth, and they must provide proper stewardship, leadership to the people. Mm -hmm. And uh, in the event where such people are identified, can we bring them to book? Mm -hmm. Can we prosecute them? Can we punish them? Even if they will administer the punishment themselves. You can get such people, you can them. Mm. Huh? For me, I will say, yes, that is good. Mm. Because you don't want to listen. Huh? Mm. Your simple act there is going to cause suffering to very many people, including themselves, the people living in that village. Mm. Why can't we shut those people who do not want to listen? We bring them to book. So, in my view, we need to talk to them, we need to teach them, we need to continue, you know, prevailing over them. I know that will be a gradual process. Mm. It may not be an instant act. Okay. Mm. So, uh, for you to enforce something, uh, there has to be a written document or uh, a guideline uh, to help you. I mean, uh, the bylaws, the ordinances, and so on. Uh, what does it take for local governments to actually enact some of these ordinances? Because the Supreme Law is already there, it has given you the leeway to actually enact uh, laws according to your situation. So what does it take for local governments to have this? Because I'm meant to understand that the majority of them do, actually, do not actually bother about uh, this offense. As a result, they don't actually have any clause uh, in any of the laws, even if it is a, uh, the, uh, uh, to do with the charcoal burning, what, what. But the component of uh, uh, bush burning is not incorporated into that. So what is it that uh, need, is actually needed for people to come up with these kind of things that has actually pushed you into the walls that you have failed to actually enact it? Well, the reality is mm -hmm. uh, processing an ordinance is a tedious work and also costly. Mm. I remember when I joined office in 2021, mm -hmm. there were already ordinances processed by Madokolo, which started in 2019. By the up to today, we have never received one for implementation, although they are now in advanced stages. Mm -hmm. And for them to have come up to the advanced stage, I think I personally have been following them seriously. I even remember a moment at the start of this year when I loaded all my staff, including some of the political leaders into vehicle, and we had to move to the office of Aton General mm. to Kampala to go and ask them, why are you delaying with our ordinances? Huh? So, Producing an ordinance is a tedious work. Mm. 
However, Maybe, uh, before you go further, mm -hmm. how much does it take for a local government to come up with one ordinance? How much does it take? Let's be honest. You, you give me as uh, maybe an example with one of them. How much we were able to spend so that we are able to understand the cost implication and also uh, maybe uh, look at whether this could be one of the factors delaying uh, working on ordinances or even sometimes the people working on them are the ones del uh, delaying them deliberately. That could be some of the issues. Well, 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 I'm not certain of the exact cost, mm. but uh, I believe it can take us about one million to produce one ordinance. Mm. Huh? Mm. It can take us one, uh, not 10 million to produce, successfully produce one ordinance. Mm. But the payment has been in phases. Mm. Huh? Mm. Yes, first write up, then uh, filing them, and then approving them, and then gazetting them, uh, and then publicizing them. Huh? Mm. You see this? Mm. It has been at the stages. Huh? Mm. One stage follows the other one, like that. Mm. And uh, I have not ascertained the exact cost, mm. but we have already incurred a lot. Mm. And some of them have not now been finally released to us. Because there are there is some pending uh, payment cost, uh, and that you have to give to the service provider. Mm. But uh, when I get back, I, I'm going to compute the overall cost. Okay, I will bring it. All right. Um. But, maybe uh, uh, any other gap that you think the local well, governments have, uh, because they may not uh, that may force them not to uh, produce some of these ordinances in time. There is no gap. Mm. There is no gap, if anything, resource limitation. Mm. Yes, because we do not have specific votes for these issues. Mm. Therefore, when there are costs involved, you really have to beg. Times you come and uh, talk to partners mm. to see if they can step in. And this time we have two partners who are helping us. Mm. Enabel and Rice Uganda, mm. who are trying to pull their resources to see that these things come out quickly. Mm. But moderator, above all, the issue of ordinance wouldn't be a standing block mm. in uh, enforcing some of these, you know, offenses. Mm. Because there are other existing laws mm -hmm. under which the ordinances obviously fall. Mm. You can you can twist this particular offense of boost burning to any other offense under forest. National Forest Authority. Yes. National Forest Act. Because also the Environment Act. Is even there. the Environment Act. Many of them. Which all prohibit this unnecessary burning of vegetation. Mm. Yes. But our issue is one commitment. Mm. We don't have commitment cadres to spearhead you know, the, 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 the fight against bush burning. Mm. Two, is the mindset of the community mm. where they say it is normal to burn these things after all, nothing is going to happen to them. Mm. It makes them still to come back with the ideas of burning our bushes every year. But above all, you know, our level of reporting issues, reporting matters, is never clear. Mm. The LC1 feels his overall. When someone does something bad there, he says, okay, it is okay. Now, at times they prefer to settle the issues there. Mm. As it's coming to settle, they are always caught uh, ah, payments. Yes. <laughs> that, hey, you are the one who invited me, you have to pay. <laughs> at times, after benefiting, yeah. he will not accept the matter to go ahead. <laughs> when actually, if this matter was to proceed, mm. and that person is subjected to some severe punishment, mm. would act as a deterrent to the other members of the community in the village. Mm. So these are the challenges we are facing. Okay, um, in the tenure of uh, the former IGP, that is, uh, uh, I've just forgotten the name. <laughs> Uh, if you look at uh, those uh, processes, uh, as I said, <coughs> there were structures established. Uh, uh, there were structures uh, like uh, 
the Vizinandi groups mm -hmm. in the villages. Mm -hmm. These were people identified uh, by the community members and their names are approved, even up to the police. Okay, now these are people who look at some of these petty, petty crimes that are, are committed in the village. They handle them, or even if it is beyond, and they have to bring that person physically to the police station. Mm. And these were people who would be dedicated in, in, in addressing the issues of uh, children who are not going to school, parents who are always there, shouting at, at home. There are people who, who like uh, telling others when they're drunk. And they feel like uh, when I shout, and they, uh, that's how I should be able to solve the issues. And that's how sometimes some of those cases were reducing, including bus burning, which was one of them. So this was abolished at some point when uh, COF uh, came back into uh, force. So um, do you wish to have these structures reinstated? Mm -hmm. And uh, do you think they are much important at this critical time where we have a leadership gap, especially at the lower local government, I mean the villages where these incidences mostly happen? Moderator, I wouldn't wish to have these people reintroduced mm -hmm. because the current setup is sufficient. Mm. By the way, but they are, they are failing. <laughs> that is where now we need to talk to them, let them change their mind. Mm. Because, you know, are you aware that the Wana Inch have a mandate to apprehend a wrongdoer and have that person presented before the law? That is it. Yes. Huh? Mm. And that's why when they come across a thief, you arrest the thief and you take him to police. Mm. Huh? If we can arrest thieves, if we can arrest murderers, why can't we arrest bush banners? Huh? Mm. Why can't you arrest a bush banner? You know this person here now has tempered with our environment. Pick him or her. Mm. Bring to police station. By the way, even in the police setup, mm. there's what we call the environment police. Mm. They are there. Huh? looking into environmental issues and they will even be much more interested mm. but now the problem is our manpower is insufficient okay and uh, such a department yes. may not be there in madokolo <laughs> as a district the whole district has only 90 police officers 90 90 how do you deploy them serving over thousands of people hey <laughs> 234,000 people Wow, huh? this is serious. We will ask, we will ask uh, what, what that means and uh, in terms of enforcement, how it is affecting. Mm. We will have police on Monday and I think that is one of the critical issues that will be actually put into them. Uh, Chairman, we are left with one minute. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> Let me have your last words and uh, wish the new year. <laughs> oh, I'm so much humbled to have yeah. got this opportunity to come and serve with my people. Mm -hmm. uh, my people of Madokolo and the entire people of West Nile, I want to urge us. Your environment is important. It matters to you. You are the first beneficiary when you conserve your environment. Mm -hmm. Please, these are the unnecessary environmental degradation aspects. Let us avoid them. Mm. We are done with the Christmas. I want to wish you a happy new year. Okay. For God and my country. All right. Thank you very much. Uh, for those of you who have been following this show from the time uh, we started, that was seven. Up to this time, we appreciate you very, very much. And also appreciate all those uh, who have been able to uh, join us uh, through different social media platforms and uh, be able to pay attention critically on uh, the challenges and also the success stories that we have been able to put here. I hope you have learned something from the discussions that we have been able to bring you here. But also take them uh, for the good use. From me to you, we say thank you very much and I appreciate that, uh, Chairman, you have been able to make it here. And also, next time when we give you a call, you can be able to, you should be able to pass by. This is your television thank you. that uh, we need uh, some people like you to come and pass information to the people. Anytime we give anyone a call, please uh, respect that and uh, be able to deliver. You may never know the reason why we're calling you is to give information to the people. So people are ready waiting for such information from pertinent persons of interest.
interest so once you uh, come you should be able to deliver the information we appreciate all those who have been able to pay attention but uh, but also today <laughs> to the uh, just a, a slight shift uh, although it's behind the camera but also the producer now is in Dijon for today but also up next is the news in Lubarati that will be brought to you by Mukla Lawrence we say thank you very much. We'll catch up again for the last edition of uh, the Coco Lyrical this year on Friday. That is tomorrow. We have, we'll be having a big guest that will be the State Minister for Northern Uganda discussing the issues of uh, the Executive Order Number no. 3 implementation in Northern Uganda. Thank you. West Nile TV, lighting up the region. I want to wish you a Merry Christmas from the bottom of my heart. Hi everyone, my name is Ayot Lillian. I host Real Talk on West Nile TV every Saturdays from 8 to 10 p.m. And I know this uh, time of the year is when we get together with friends, family, our loved ones uh, to make merry and have fun, share joy and love. I would love to wish you a merry, merry Christmas and also uh, caution you to be very careful during this season because a lot of excitement uh, takes place around this time so we should be careful how we you know party and especially how we use the road because around uh, around this time a lot of accidents do occur so use the road carefully so that it's a safe place for everyone otherwise from West Nile TV thank you so much for watching us keep watching us for more updates and enjoy your Christmas ho 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 Merry Christmas